people out traveling uh, this weekend. And they'll be going to uh, probably their home places, maybe where they were born and raised. And they'll be going to cemeteries. And they'll be placing flowers on a lot of the lo uh, loved ones' grave site. And you will see a lot of flags being placed around. Every military tombstone will have a flag portrayed this weekend for sure. Um, and so we begin to remember those loved ones that are, that are gone. Um, I have a friend that she'll buy a bunch of flowers and she will go to the different graveyards and if she knows someone that maybe was a friend of a friend for all I know, she and they haven't had any flowers on her grave, she will put a flower there. And what a good way to remember. I think one of the things that funeral homes are doing now for funerals is they have this video and they project all the pictures up on the wall, you know, so that you can sit there in the quiet of the moment and go back in time and see uh, your friend or your loved one uh, as they go from childhood up through their life. And it, it's a memory. And I think that's good. Like us on Facebook, the church frog that we have on the little cards will get people to realize where Maranatha Baptist Church is at. And if they don't know, they'll begin to look. So we're hoping that before too long, we will have a frog outside next to our church sign that will tie in with the cards that we're using in visitation to lead people to the church. Now I want us for just a moment to take a look at the man called Judas Iscariot. The scripture that I gave you Um, Matthew, <clears throat> the 27th chapter of Matthew, verses 3, beginning with verse 3. When, when Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. So he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priests and the elders. I have sinned, he declared, for I have betrayed an innocent man. What do we care, they retorted. That's your problem. Has anybody ever told you that's your problem? <laughs> then Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple and went out and hanged himself. Then Judas, uh, the, uh, <laughs> verse 6, the leading priest picked up the coins it wouldn't be right to put this money in the temple treasury, they said, since it was payment for murder. After some discussion, they finally decided to buy the potter's field, and they made it into a cemetery for f foreigners. That is why the field is still called the field of blood. This fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah that says, they took the 30 pieces of silver, 
the price at which he was valued by the people of Israel and purchased the potter's field as the Lord directed. Then the other scripture that was, was to look at is Acts, the first chapter. Verse 15, during this time, when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. Brothers, he said, the scriptures had to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided those who arrested Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit, speaking through King David. Judas was one of us and shared in the ministry with us. Verse 18, Judas had bought a field with the money he received for, the, for, the, for his treachery. Falling head first there, his body split open, spilling out all his intestines. Now, the 18th verse is the verse that supposedly people say contradicts with the verse in Matthew that says that they took the money that Judas had thrown down. They picked that money up and they bought the field. Now, I'm not attempting to disclose that this one's right and that one's wrong. But this is not a contradiction in a sense, but that's how sometimes we tend to read the scripture. We attempt to know what God is saying. And what's really important here, and I think we all need to think about that, is that if God so wanted it to be as it is written, nobody can change it, you know? because it's according to God's plan. Notice that God predicted just exactly what was going to happen. Did you know that Judas was a thief? <laughs> Judas was a thief. I didn't know that until this morning. I hadn't made that connection. But in, uh, in John's Gospel, the uh, 17th chapter, Beginning with the ninth verse through the twelfth, it talks about Jesus, it talks about Judas being the one that's headed for destruction. Jesus made that same comment about Judas at the Lord's Last Supper. As he sat with Judas, and all the disciples began, as Jesus said, the one who eats with me is going to betray me. God knew what Judas was going to do long before G Judas made it, made his decision to do it. Long before he went and took out the 30 pieces of silver, God knew what Judas was going to do. He knew how G Judas was going to die. Just as God knows everything about us. <clears throat> There's more scripture concerning uh, this thing with, with Jesus. And I want, with Judas, I want to read in the, in the 17th chapter of John, Verse 12. In fact, I'm going to read 9 through 12, the one that I, the scripture I just give you. John, the 17th chapter, beginning with verse 9. My prayer is not for the world, these are the words of Jesus, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine 
belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from this world, they are staying in this world, but I am coming to you, Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. The name of Christ is Christian. We call ourselves Christians. During my time here, I protect them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost except the one headed for destruction, as the scriptures foretold. You know what's important about all of this? Is that through Judas Iscariot, we are showing the way to salvation. Judas allowed his life to be taken over by Satan, to be ruled by the devil. And sometimes that, that's what happens in our life. We allow Satan to get a hold. And we will even use the scripture a lot of times. Well, that's actually Satan working through us to use the scripture to cause us not to accept Jesus Christ as the Savior.